Hi, today we're going to talk about the formation of sedimentary exhalative or SEDEX deposits. Um, we'll go through a little bit of what they are, um, how they form, we'll look at some ore samples, and we'll also look at some demonstrations that show how, uh, how they formed on the seafloor. So sedimentary exhalative deposits or SEDEX deposits are thought to form at or near the seafloor as hydrothermal solutions from sedimentary basins uh, go up fault structures and either uh, come out onto the seafloor where the metals precipitate or possibly replace layers uh, uh, beneath the seafloor. Um, so without further ado, we'll have a look at some ore samples and then we'll go back into some more information on how they're thought to form. What we're looking at here is lead zinc silver ore from the HYC deposit in Australia. What's interesting about this particular sample is you can see the really finely laminated uh, samples of sulfides. So these are layers of galena, pyrite, sphalerite, the more silvery layers are the galena layers, like this one up here, and the kind of browner layers are going to be variable amounts of pyrite and sphalerite. So this sort of indicates that these uh, sulfide minerals precipitated directly out of the seawater, uh, and this is thought to be in a vent distal type system that we'll go into more detail later. Um, so again, we can see these thin layers and in this sample over here it's very similar only it's been folded possibly due to uh, soft sediment deformation and again we have these layers of sphalerite that are more sphalerite rich that are more pyrite rich and are more galena rich so these are samples of a vent distal type system um, at the HYC deposit in Australia. Uh, we're looking at more lead zinc ore from the HYC deposit. Uh, this is, has broken faces. So we can see the sparkle of the galena a little bit better. So the galena, the lead ore, where a lot of the silver also is, are these faces that are sort of shining at us here. Again, this is finely laminated ore um, that formed in a C4 type setting uh, that uh, is again lead, uh, so galena, sphalerite, and pyrite largely. Um, and yeah, you can see a nice layer of gleam right here. It's really sparkling at us. Um, the duller kind of brown would be intergrown pyrite and sphalerite largely. And again, this is lead zinc ore from, uh, from the H HYC deposit in Australia. SEDEX deposits are thought to form in two main stages. Uh, the first stage is you have a rift basin, and this means that you have a lot of sediment being accumulated into them. So you get very thick uh, sequences of siliciclastic rocks uh, with some shales and stuff like that within the basin. And then this is capped by something that acts at least as an aquitard. And what this allows is for conate fluids to develop within the basin um, that will eventually get fairly saline. And due to the geothermal gradient, they will be able to convect within the basin. And this gives those fluids a chance to scavenge a lot of the metals uh, from that basin. And then the next stage, after we have this fluid that's been convecting for some time um, and scavenging a lot of metals, we need to have uh, some discrete tectonic events that reactivate faults within the basin and allow the fluids to go up those faults to discharge on the seafloor and deposit the metals that have accumulated within them. Now, one of the factors of these fluids is that they're going to be quite saline, um, which is required uh, to carry the metals we need. And this is especially the, core, the case for the, uh, what we'll talk about soon, the vent distal deposits that are lower temperature um, and are deposited further away. They also need to be oxidized for the vent distal deposits, whereas vent proximal deposits, they're going to be higher temperature fluids, might have a magmatic component, uh, and are more likely to be reduced um, because their deposition mechanism is different. So this is how vent distal deposits look like. And as I mentioned, the fluids tend to be more saline and lower temperature. And in this case, the ore fluid goes up the fault and then is uh, vented onto the seafloor, um, but the 
but the fluid is oxidized, so any sulfur is a sulfate. And it doesn't actually mix very well with the ocean water, so it's able to pool in topographic lows. And then as bacterial sulfate reduction works on the sulfate within the fluid, it deposits the metals in finely laminated layers. Um, it's also possible that these fluids don't actually make it to the sea, flo sea floor, but actually move away from the fault zone uh, within unconsolidated sed sediments and deposit the ore that way. Again, though, through bacterial sulfate reduction. Uh, the other type of sedex deposit is what we call vent proximal deposits. Uh, these fluids are more likely to be reducing. They may be saline, but they don't have to be as saline as the vent distal deposits, and they're going to be higher temperature. So their main uh, method of ore precipitation is either due to cooling when that fluid hits the seafloor, or uh, due to dilution of the seawater because because the fluid is hotter it's going to mix more readily uh, with the surrounding seawater and because it's less saline again it's going to miss mix more readily with the uh, surrounding sea uh, seafloor this means that our ore is going to be most concentrated near that fluid conduit there might be a stringer zone below it and it's going to progressively uh, get lower grade as we move away from that vent structure all right, uh, water density is really important for how these form. Our vent proximal deposits are going to be probably less saline and hotter. So they're going to uh, vent and mix more readily with the seawater, whereas our vent distal deposits are going to be cooler and much higher salinity. So they're going to just come out of the that uh, fluid site and then sink and fill in topographic lows where sulfate, bacterial sulfate reduction will help precipitate the metals out of our ore. So again, just in summary, uh, vent distal deposits are higher salinity, so the fluid is higher density, lower temperature, again, makes a, a, a higher density fluid, and they're going to be oxidized. And this is an example of uh, this would be the HYC deposit in Australia. Uh, um, alternatively, the vent uh, proximal deposits have lower salinity and higher temperature, so they have a lower density than the vent distal deposits. They're more likely to be reduced as well. And now we'll go on and see uh, some videos of the uh, venting of these sorts of deposits and how it would have looked on the seafloor. What we're looking at here is a demonstration of how the fluids would have gone onto the seafloor. So what we're starting with is a cool brine solution. And you can see, obviously, it wouldn't be coming down uh, from the space there, but it'd be coming up along faults. And the fluids uh, pour out onto the seafloor. And because there's such a difference in density, it doesn't automatically mix with the overlying water. so it flows down and forms in topographic lows that start to fill up. And this would be an oxidized saline fluid. Um, and since it's oxidized, the sulfur would be a sulfate. And once it pools in these topographic lows, if there's enough organic matter, bacteria can use that sulfate to make sulfide that then goes to precipitate our sulfide minerals. And that's why we get those really fine laminations. You can see as we keep adding more and more of this brine that it, the further away topographic low starts to fill up as they um, pool up top. And we can also see that there is the, the brine is sinking down and actually forming into layers as well. So one of the models of these is that they don't necessarily have to make it to the seafloor, but sometimes it can go into unconsolidated settle sediments and also precipitate the ore minerals uh, in the same way. So again, we have this uh, cool saline brine that's carrying our metals. It's oxidized. It's uh, settling into topographic lows. And this is how our ore forms. Now we'll go on to look at uh, some higher temperature Now we're going to look at a lower salinity, higher temperature example. This would be more like your vent proximal system. So as we start adding the water, it is higher temperature. 
um, and not particularly saline, so it's less dense than the surrounding seawater. So it's able to go up and mix pretty effectively with the seawater. So this ends up resulting in a depositional mechanism of either dilution of the ore fluids, so the ligands can't carry the metals as easily, or cooling of the, air, the ore fluids, which makes it so um, those fluids can't carry the metals as, as effectively again. And both of these would result in sulfide uh, precipitation. And this is because there's uh, sulfide within the or fluid that is reduced in this case. So in the previous uh, case where we looked at the vent distal deposit, it's an oxidized or fluid because that allows uh, that cooler fluid to carry more metals. Um, whereas in this case where we have a hotter fluid, the higher temperature allows those fluids to carry more metals. Um, so again, these are our two end members, the vent proximal, where the fluid is able to mix more effectively with the uh, with the seawater and therefore cool them, causing metal deposition, and then the more dense ore fluid where it flows away, cools, and then the sulfate is reduced to sulfide, which uh, precipitates.